Welcome, Anita. Hi. Oh, Thanks so I much for being here. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me on. So for our listeners who may not be familiar, tell us about the Signs of Love series and what its origins are. Uh, as a general breakdown, basically the Signs of Love stories are um, different men who are generally stereotypes of their zodiac signs and they're searching for true love. And it's true love that is usually um, right under their noses. So it's it plays on cluelessness and um, and searching for something that's right there all along. And what was your inspiration to create the series? Oh yeah, um, so I was in Scotland. I was in Edinburgh, and I was walking up Arthur's Seat, and I just had a baby. I was sleep deprived. I hadn't been able to write for many, many months due to being morning sickness and, uh, you know, having the baby. Um, and I was itching. I was itching to write. And I was just walking up there. And I just, I had visions of scenes and, and these boys that were falling in love. And I had no idea what quite their, what shape their story would have. But I had these bits of dialogue. Um, uh, it just, I could see these two boys um, who were at university, uh, college, uh, who just, yeah, they, they were going to come together somehow. And it had to be funny. And the reason that it had to be funny was because um, in 2016, it was a very terrible year all around. And um, I was also quite depressed and I needed to um, lift myself. And I thought, yeah, I've got to write something that's lighthearted. And so, yeah, I was walking up Arthur's seat and it just kind of struck, I want to say, it just struck. And I remember thinking I have to get home, but I'm all the way up the top of the cliffs. I have to get home because I need to start writing. I just had to. Um, and then when I got, I mean, the home, it was like an Airbnb place that we were staying in. Um, and I got there and I um, started jotting some stuff down. I think I got through the first chapter pretty uh, pretty quickly. Um, and then I realized, well, what is this, you know, what is this about? In addition to that, um, I remember worrying that I was going to be a terrible mum because I have a big kid and I have a small kid and I was tossing up. Try, trying to juggle up how to give each of them the time that they needed. Um, and I was worried that I wasn't going to manage this. And so I did something that I probably shouldn't have done. And that was I looked up my kids and parents' star sign compatibilities because I wanted to see if my Taurus baby would, you know, be a really good match for my Leo personality. And the same for my bigger one, who is a Pisces. Um, and I really shouldn't have done that because apparently we're not very good at all. We're going to have lots of drama, <laughs> which I already see. Um, so we're all going to work really hard to <laughs> to do a good job as a family. Um, and because of that, I was thinking about compatibilities and how um, there are different you know, personalities and how they mesh and how it was kind of fun and I mean looking up uh, with my ch children um, the compatibilities it was just it was fun and games it was being silly you know I didn't actually believe that you know my uh, relationship with my children would be anything like these compatibilities I saw um, or read but I had fun doing it and then I thought well what if wait a second what if I did that with my main characters if they actually did represent um, those star signs and how would that be? How would they mesh? And that kind of got spiraling. And so I had these scenes um, with the two boys um, and it just kind of all came crashing together. Like this, this mom who was crazy about star signs um, and how she would, you know, feed this to her Leo kid and um, he didn't believe it and and yet he was uh, from my view he was representing all the leo traits and so that's kind of how it 
came about. That was very long winded and all over the place. <laughs> I hope you can follow some of that. Were um, you into astrology before the book idea came? You know, not really, but kind of. It was always like, oh, come on. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm not really a Leo. I'm really not. I'm more like Cancer, surely. No, maybe. Actually, no, I'm a Libra. Hmm. You know, look it up. Check it out. Um, yeah, so I wasn't heavily into it, but okay. I had a lot of fun. You know, you, 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 did, you pick up a, a magazine with girlfriends or – um, check it out or you look up what your boyfriend or husband is and you know what's going to happen that week kind of for shits and giggles um, and it's always been like that for me I'm not seriously into it but as I started uh, writing the series I did end up uh, learning a lot more about the process and it's a lot more complicated than just star signs um, there are moon signs and you know yeah, there's well, a lot that goes into that. Yeah, exactly. Retrograde and la 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 and everything. So there's it's a it's very complex as are people. Mm -hmm. um, but for the simplicity's sake and for just the fun of it, I focus on the star signs. That's very cool. I love how you had this this moment of plot inspiration. You were just driven to get back to the Airbnb because you had to write it. Yeah. I love that. Now let's dig into this new book. Pisces hooks Taurus. What? What? Who? Who do we get to meet in this book, and and what's happening with them? Okay, so um, Pisces hooks Taurus is the fourth in the Signs of Love series. It's an opposites tract, a romantic comedy, and this time it features an unapologetic romantic and a, a broken realist, and they're trying to convince each other that uh, true love doesn't exist or that it does. So we have. Zane, who sees himself as this kind of regular Kiwi, uh, that's a New Zealander, uh, a bit cheeky, bigger dreamer, uh, an even bigger idiot. Um, and he loves three things. He loves drawing, and he loves pecans, and he loves romance. Also, his visa is about to run out, uh, and he's on the search to find uh, true love, and it has to be true love, uh, before the month is out. Um, and he really believes that this will happen. This is uh, my beautiful Zane. Uh, and then there's Beckett, uh, who is recovering from a failed marriage, has a bitter outlook on, on love in general, and he absolutely does not believe in love at first sight. Just forget it. Um, and the book explores you know, this um, theme, thematic question, and uh, you'll have to read the book to find out. Um, <laughs> if either of their opinions change. No. I bet they do since it's a romance. That's just a guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty good guess. <laughs> now, the week this airs, the first week of November, uh, the podcast turns three. Uh, can you give the show a quick horoscope? I can. Well, firstly, happy uh, podcast birthday. Thank uh, you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, three years old on November the 5th, which uh, makes your podcast a Scorpio. Uh, and that really seems fitting to um, the structures of your podcast and the regularity of your podcast work to one of Scorpio's major strengths, and that's focus. Um, another fitting trait is the jovial and passionate nature of the podcast. Um, they're fun and yet they're carefully thought out and, um, yeah, uh, more traits. They're honest. You guys are honest, passionate and persistent, which I like. This is going to, um, be over 100 and something, something episode. Yeah. This will um, be like one, 160 something. I think <laughs> it's incredible. Um, and I see that the next year will bring uh, even more expansion and even more amazing big gay fiction that you can read, write, watch, listen to, and you guys can talk about. <laughs> Very cool. I like I like those traits. They they seem to fit the show really well. So yeah, thank you thank you for doing that. That that was a little bit of fun there. It was fun. Now shifting a little bit from star signs, you've got another series out there that actually focuses on the alphabet. 
Oh, yes, I do. The Love Letters series. Yes. Now tell us about that one, because that's interesting how you're kind of, I think, planning 26 books. Yes. Um, tentatively, I'm planning 26 books. I am definitely starting chronologically. And um, yeah, the idea is that these are shorter books. And they're meant to be little escapist fantasies, a little bit like um, episodes. Um, and they're, they're striving for uh, fun, really uber tropey, um, over the top little love bites for in between uh, longer novels. And, um, and not just for reading, but for writing too. I find um, writing bigger stories, bigger novels, it takes a lot of emotional energy. Mm -hmm. um, and it takes me a long time to write them, which is good, I think, and, and necessary. Um, but in between, I just want to have like a downtime, actually. And so <laughs> I just want to write a little, a little fairy tale. And so that's what these are. They're just little in between fairy tales that make me really happy to write. And um, I'm using them a lot at the moment to kind of explore different ways of writing emotion um, and looking at, yeah, how to get better as a writer and trying to use each, um, yeah, each letter just to, to kind of tackle something I want to work on in the story so that I can then employ those things in my bigger, um, you know, bigger books better, basically. That's a very cool way to, to approach it, both as kind of like a creative recharge and also essentially a writing exercise. Yeah, replenishing the toolkit, um, trying new things, seeing whether they work. It's, um, yeah, I, I think there is a lot to learn as a writer. I think I'm constantly learning. I think many times I fail uh, really badly too. <laughs> And I like looking at why and what can be um, worked on to make a read more compelling or more interesting or the characters give them more depth possibly or make them more funny or, yeah, I just like playing around and, and just trying to hone the skills. And um, I think the love letters are a great way to do that. Where in the series are you right now? And, and tell us about the most recent one. A to C have come out and... D is coming out this month in November. Um, I have already written up to E and I have done about a third of F. So there's still quite a way to go. Um, and I do notice um, that I get bored with certain things sometimes. So I um, kind of go off on tangents. I find it hard. This is, this is why I like writing standalones. Um, and don't usually follow characters from book to book, uh, because I, I like conflict and I like it really in the nitty gritty. And then I get bored of that. And then I want to try a new one and I want to give, um, uh, the boys their, you know, their conflict that they have to solve and then kind of like jumping on and on. Um, yeah. I found it. Tell us what these about. Um, Daring Duke. Um, it's a forbidden romance, so I'm playing up the emotion a bit there. Uh, it's also probably the sexiest book that I have written. Um, and it's forbidden in the fact that it's two guys who really like each other, love each other. They have known each other the, all their lives, and the reason that is is because they are cousins. So... They have um, the the conflict is uh, uh, basically internal. How do they um, overcome the fact that you know they are in some way related, and will they, and how, and yes. Interesting. It was yeah. It was it was fun um, and a little surprising. And it was good to get into different mindsets again, mm -hmm. different minds. Yeah. You call yourself the queen of slow burn romance. <laughs> well, I wouldn't call myself that, but I suppose I have been called that before. <laughs> you have been anointed as that, perhaps, is a better way to put it. 
What is it about slow burn that you love so much? Uh, definitely the development in romance. And by that, I mean that there is a progression that feels natural from friends um, or maybe possibly enemies. Let's go even back there. Um, disliking to liking to learning about one another. Um, usually I get to a point in a story where my characters are best friends before they realize they are more than that. And that's important for me because I, there's a fundamental belief for myself is that um, you are best friends with your partner. And, and I want to show that first um, in the development of a romance. So this is part of the reason why I like slow burn so much. Love it actually. Also, I feel that there is a lot of tension between the characters because when you have two people and everyone else kind of knows what's going on except for the two people, there is an element of frustration, a good type of frustration, I feel, um, where you're kind of screaming at the characters just to get it together, figure it out. Um, can you not read the subtext, you know? <laughs> He's actually saying this. Why can't you see it already? It's it's a lot of fun. I think it, it, it's engaging, and I love reading it. Um, uh, yeah, so that's kind of that whole will they, won't they, or more specifically, when will they and how will they? Mm -hmm. um, and also, it's just, as an author, I love to tease. I guess that kind of comes from my Leo personality, a little bit playful, like kind of getting close and then drawing away and then, you know, getting a bit closer and then drawing away. It's it's fun to write. Are there any particular tropes you like to see the slow burn applied to? I mean, obviously, you know, friends to lovers and even enemies to friends to lovers easily goes in that direction. Are there others that you like to play with there? Yeah, well, you're right. You've um, <laughs> you've mentioned a lot of uh, really good ones. I love the friends to lovers, enemies to lovers, um, and there are quite a few others that are a lot of fun too, like the fake fiancés or fake boyfriends or the best friend's brother or December May. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I just love going wild with them. I think there's so much fun to exploit and. Um, especially when I'm writing lighthearted books. Um, and I, I write angst too. Um, I have other books that are, are more heavier, um, which I don't tend to use these tropes on because I feel that they are more for the lighthearted, um, fun stories. And um, yeah, and uh, yeah, so I like using them, writing them, um, and I also have noticed that it's not just these bigger kind of tropes, like, you know, the overarching um, novel tropes, but there are all these really cool tropes that you can use in small scenes too. And I found that I kind of stumbled across them because I was looking up tropes uh, online. And there's this list of uh, TV tropes that they use uh, for romance. And this list is long. This is like over a hundred different types of tropes long. And so I've been uh, writing some of my favorite ones down. And for example, um, a trope would be like the kissed keepsake where um, you don't want to wash a part of the body that was kissed by a crush or the, um, the, the hypocritical heart warmer. So like you like to tease your love interest a lot you antagonize them a lot and it pisses them off and you kind of like that but if anyone else does it you just go crazy at them so because uh, no one else is allowed to do it only yourself and uh, another one um i have i have this whole list oh wow uh, yeah a whole, it, a whole it, two pages full it, there it looks oh my like. god no it's more it's like uh, and these are just the ones that i really want to write but there are more um, and that oh, like the um, smithical marriage where you go to a hotel and you pretend that you're married. So you sign under the same name um, and other ones that I think are quite cool. Like um, 
the mistaken declaration of love. Like you think you're, you know, announcing to your, uh, your love interest that yes, it is you, you're the one for me. And then, you know, you open up the dressing room or whatever and, uh, it's someone else there or it's just a lot of fun. Um, yeah, yeah, really. I I recommend having a look. It, It is hilarious to read some of these things. And I noticed I do them without even realizing, like yeah. using some of these tropes as well. And I think everyone uses them, like because they're so ingrained, and we see it on television all the time, and yeah. um, or we read it in books all the time. And I noticed that I did it for Pisces, Hooks, Taurus, and I didn't realize until afterwards. But uh, another trope is like acting like the old married couple, even though they're not an old married couple. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to write. I recommend having a, writing a list of the things that you want to write and going nuts. <laughs> yeah. Besides the trope list, are there other like subgenres you want to explore? We, we, we mentioned in your intro that there's a little splash of fantasy in some of the books. Are there other things that you kind of want to explore that you just haven't yet? Yeah, I just don't know I'm a good enough writer to do them <laughs> yet. Um, and I want to get better before I do some of these bigger dream books. Um, I love writing fantasy. Um, I don't, (laughs) yeah, I, I write it every now and then it never sells very well, (laughs) which is fine. Um, but it's, it's such a huge investment in time. Um, that it's yeah it's hard to it's hard to keep trying and getting better at it um at the moment um just time wise with two kids and everything um but i love fantasy i have a series that i started um a couple years back i have notes and notes and notes about how to finish this and it's it's a three book series and i have it in my head um and it's just a matter of finding the time to do it. I also have another dream. Oh, this is the problem. I have so many notes and so many books I want to write. I don't know when I'm going to write them all because I'm quite a slow writer. <laughs> but there's this other dream book that I have in my head. I don't know if it's a book or three books. Hopefully it's just one book because the time. <laughs> <laughs> and that is an enemies to lovers underdog romance. I would really love to write about a um, a secret society of debathletes, and debathletes are as a team that um, debate against each other and they fence in like a combination sport. Um, and I imagine it as different houses competing against each other. Houses is the term that you use in debating. Um, and they, yeah, this, this one team comes in and it's, it's from one guy's perspective. Um, and he is a complete underdog and no one gives him any, you know, chance basically, but he's just going to fight his way to the top. And ultimately, of course, hopefully win. (laughs) Um, I'm fascinated by that. I've never heard of like a combined sport of debating and fencing. No, it's completely made up. (laughs) Oh, you've made this up. See, I was convinced there for a second. It was totally real. Yeah, I mean, maybe it is real. Maybe, maybe there is this uh, secret society of debathletes. I'm not sure. That would be cool. Um, I I look forward to this one day from you. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) If I get around to it. Oh, I really would like to write that one. But again, it's a little darker, which isn't what I'm writing at the moment. And I have to say at the moment, I'm feeling more the lighthearted, um, writing lighthearted stories, particularly uh, in light of how I feel um, and how, yeah, I just, I just need more lightness mm-hmm. in life. I think so. we all do, actually. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm totally with you on that. What got you into male male romance, uh, both as a reader and a writer? Okay, so it kind of does tie into my um, fantasy fail. Um, I originally, way back in the day, wrote a um, an epic fantasy book based on real-life chess pieces. Um, and 
I had a uh, subplot um, and it was a gay romance subplot. Um, and I wanted to make sure that what I was writing was um, um, was good, was um, authentic, um, that it made sense that you know I wanted I wanted to ask questions about what I was writing. So I signed up to um, gay authors and uh, went online there and met so many amazing people, really, really, really amazing people that um, that listen to you and talk to you, gave you um, feedback on um, on your story, on what things might need development, um, where, yeah, um, where things might be problematic and in all, in all facets of the writing process. Um, and it was really great to be able to, to chat with people and having people be so open and, and, um, and kind of work through plot elements there. And I really loved, I really loved the, um, the community there. And, and then I started writing chapter by chapter, uh, my first um, MM romance story um, and it kind of grew from there. Before that, um, I remember actually being given my first um, gay novel as a birthday present from a neighbor uh, and she said, the, uh, the bookstore attendant recommended this. Would you, you know, so, you know, read it and tell me what you think. And um, it was Call Me By Your Name by Andre Ahiman. Amazing. I was just incredible. Um, I devoured this book. I felt um, it was very emotional. Um, and then I got to the end and not to say any spoilers, but I wanted to rewrite the end. <laughs> so, um, I guess that was also a motivation to, to write my own stories and have, um, more happy endings in general. And, um, I really enjoy writing in, um, in the genre. I find the male psyche absolutely fascinating I find the grappling with um, masculinity uh, and the societal norms for guys um, and their role in modern family really interesting too. And there is a lot of um, a lot of conflict there and a lot to explore. And um, I really enjoy doing that. Um, and it's also super important. Um, to me that all kinds of relationships um, are shown in in my stories too so gay lesbian bi straight um, I have a lot of demisexual characters um, and um, looking into writing some asexual characters and yeah love is love <laughs> absolutely love is love so we've talked about a couple things that are coming up here in November between Pisces Hooks Taurus and the D entry in the love letter series. What can you project out from there that's coming up towards the end of the year and even rolling into early 2019? I got offered to jump in to do a Christmas um, story as part of a group of amazing authors, or I am in the process of writing a Christmas story. Um, or definitely by the time that this plays, <laughs> I will hopefully have written it. Um, so that will be coming out, and uh, that's going to be set in the 90s. Fun, lighthearted romance, um, and it's going to be playing on um, the very awesome um, 99 movie that came out, 10 Things I Hate About You. Um, so a kind of taming of the shrew story, except it's more friending of the shrew story. Um, and, uh, yeah, I look forward to that coming out. <laughs> And um, otherwise, I will be and um, writing on the next uh, signs of love, 
And actually, I wanted to um, share with uh, the viewers um, what the pairing will be for book five. Oh, cool. Uh, yes, yeah. tell us. Um, I am going to show you. I hope that's um, obvious enough. Uh, Cancer and Aquarius. Those are going to be the two signs for Signs of Love 5. I love that you have a shirt with that. Did you have to? You had to get that custom made, right? Because, or do they just sell them that way? <laughs> no, I. Um, well, I own the um, images because I had a, an amazing artist, Maria. She created these for me. I had a little vision for all of the um, star signs, and she was amazing. And she whipped these up, and um, and then I thought, well, this might be a great opportunity just to reveal it so i made it into a t-shirt and there you go that's awesome well, you, you you've seen it here first folks cancer and aquarius for book five all right very that's cool right. how can people keep up with you online so they can keep track of the progress on on cancer and aquarius and all your other work um yeah my website anitasunday.com um twitter at um just anita sunday and um, Facebook, Anita Sunday Books, is, um, the page there. Fantastic. We will link up to all of that in the show notes along with the books that we talked about today. Yeah. Anita, thank you so much for hanging out with us for a little bit. It's been awesome. Oh, yeah. It's been really great. Thank you so much for inviting me. 